A question that I'm often asked is how can I create a software development programming YouTube channel? What are things I should avoid and what are some things I should do? And so today I thought it'd be fun to kind of take a look at my YouTube channel, give you some recommendations of some other YouTube channels to follow and some tips if you're interested in becoming a content creator. Now I'll say this job isn't for everyone. It's actually a really fun passion project of mine that I started doing all the way back in 2015. In fact, if you look at my YouTube channel and you go to videos and you look at the oldest, this video I did eight years ago, I was actually a student. I was working on my master's and one of the classes I took was a personal branding class. And one of the final projects in that class was to create a video. So you can see from here, it was pretty bad lighting. I didn't really know what I was supposed to do. And it was just supposed to be like a trailer for my channel. But you could see how far I've come from this video. Uh, one thing I actually did when I was creating this video, I had no idea what I was doing. I went to the local library and rented out a bunch of video equipment. I went to a co-working space, asked if I could get some time. They said, fine. I got a little corner and I set up a tripod and I talked in front of this camera for probably three hours for to make a, what's this, a four minute video. So I did take after take after take. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't realize I could edit the video afterwards. There was other people in the co-working space that were watching me record, so it made me nervous. Uh, overall, it was a pretty awful experience. So since then, I think I've gotten much better at creating videos or at least more, much more comfortable talking in front of a camera and editing. So if you take a look at my channel now, you can see I have over 715 videos, over 100,000 subscribers, and it's definitely been a slog. So even though I created my first video in 2015, I didn't really get into creating videos normally or regularly until 2017. And then since then, I have really been doing a lot of content education, especially on Vue.js, JavaScript, AWS, and it's been like really, really fun. So the first thing I'd recommend if you are looking to go down this path, and that's to make sure you buy a nice microphone. So here is the, I have an RE320 microphone. It works really well. I'm also just using a Logitech webcam right now. I would. If you're just starting off with, I wouldn't spend a lot of money. You can probably even buy a $50 microphone off of Amazon and maybe a $50 webcam, you know, even just go to Walmart and just buy it all if you just want to try this out. The most important thing I think is making sure that people can hear you. Uh, with this RE320, it plugs directly into a Scarlett, which is a way, it, it basically takes a condenser mic and outputs it back to a PC or Mac. Another thing I think you probably should do even before you even start is to try to think of what niche or what you want to tell and what you want to educate people on. As you could probably guess if you've been watching this channel for a while, my niche is really on web development, JavaScript, Vue.js, React, Angular. I do a lot of Vue videos because I've written and talked a lot about Vue, but I also have been expanding. You could see just from here, I did a lot of Tailwind videos recently, a lot of UI component frameworks. What you'll find out is if you stick with one niche, you do run out of topics, especially if it's something very small like Vue. So what I've been doing is kind of expanding it. I'll do a Vue.js video, and then I'll do a JavaScript video, and then I'll do a hosting video, and then I'll do an AWS video. So I do try to mix it up quite a bit. Now, I, I found this article that says how to start a YouTube channel about programming software and technology. I'll put a link in below. It's written in 2019 from the guys from Free Code Camp. And it kind of mentioned some of the things I, I've been talking about and how to start your channel. They kind of break down different types of YouTube channels. So when I talk about a niche, my niche is really talking in front of the camera, doing educational content, getting into very technical things. I would say a lot of my videos, especially on the Views.js side are intermediate, sometimes maybe a little bit more advanced, but that's not the only style that you could have if you want to start a YouTube channel. The tutorial style, which I'm kind of talking about, but there's also like the informational style YouTube videos. I'll shout out to my friend, Cody Fit Forest Knight, a real tough candy. And when you watch their videos, they're kind of talking to you informational style. Sometimes they're, you call them like talking head videos, but they're giving you advice. They're telling you, you know, what you should and shouldn't do. I have seen some amazing YouTube content creators like Melky, who just very charismatic, funny guy. His videos are, are really like that. He does a lot of Golang 
videos. I think he has his most success on there. He also streams. There's also Theo. There's also Primogen. So it's really interesting. They give you really lots of in-depth information and advice on interesting topics. And so they're not necessarily doing coding tutorials like I am, but they're really talking about topics that might be interesting to you in kind of a funny, entertaining way. They also talk about this kind of live coding style. I kind of alluded to this a little bit earlier. They mentioned coding garden and coding train. I'd say right now, this is becoming slowly more popular. I think it's not, it hasn't gained much more momentum than it was in 2019, but there are, like I mentioned, Primogen, Theo, Melky. I think there's a trash dev. There's a whole bunch of developers who are now going on Twitch and these live services and just talking about coding. They're interacting with chat. I tried it a few times. I actually have a, just give a shout out. I have a weekly show on AWS. It's called Front End and Mobile Dev Hour. It's on 9 a.m. Pacific time on Tuesdays on the AWS channel. So you can see me do some of these similar things. And then he mentions another topic called software entertainment style YouTube videos like Michael Reeves, Jabril's Code Bullet. I will say if you are creating a YouTube channel that it being entertaining is extremely important. You don't want to be super boring. I know sometimes my tutorials sometimes get a little bit boring, but you want to keep people interested. So like having every 19 to like 30 seconds, having a different jump cut, a zoom in, something just to break up the monotony. B-roll is obviously helps really well. And I think one person that does this really great that I just thought of is web dev simplified. So most of his videos are tutorials where he's teaching a topic, but occasionally he does more like opinions and talks about, and he adds in B roll and I believe he has an editor and he does this really well. So this would be an example of that type of channel. I think another really important thing to think of with a YouTube channel that if you're starting off with is when you create videos, try to think of a catchy title and thumbnail. So you can see some of the videos that I do, this view app with Claude three blew me away. I could have just made this title. Look at this Claude three Sonnet app with AWS Amplify gen two, but I knew like no one would click on that. So what I did is I said, wow, this really did blow me away. So I made the title like, Hey, I'm trying out this new AI app. I created using view and Next.js, and I'm using AWS Amplify gen two in the back end. So let's create a video on it. And so most of the video is just me like playing around with this new large language model uh, and it worked really well. You could also see from the thumbnail here, I kind of have that open mouth expression, like, well, what's happening. I have a kind of an interesting, cool picture here. And I think people really like to see me in the thumbnails. I put myself in every single thumbnail, a lot of open mouth. I know it's kind of cringe at times, but I, I think people really like to see emotion. They like to see people's faces. I always, usually before every video, I spend some time, just maybe like five minutes to think of a good title to add to it before it even records so that way people kind of know. So that way when I record, I can kind of tailor it towards the title I created. And I know that people will click on it and I'm not always successful. Like I created, you could see here a couple of my videos, style your app with tail and CSS in 10 minutes. It's more of a challenge video. It didn't do as well as some of the other ones. So it's always like an experiment with YouTube. Like this video, I have no idea if it's gonna get uh, 500 views or 10,000 views. I hope you guys are watching it right now or getting some education out of it, but it's always who knows what will happen. So this is the style and I would say if you're starting off, try to think of what are some interesting topics in the niche that you're going for and how can you have a very succinct title that will catch people and make them want to click and watch it. And then in the first, say 30 seconds or one minute of the video, try to think of that hook to make sure that they watch it. So one person that really does this well, I think is Chris Sean. He actually has a very unique style. He has almost like a vlogging or lifestyle type of channel where he's talking about coding and he really caters towards new developers who are trying to get into this space for the first time. And if you look at his intros, he like is spot on in the first minute. He tells you what the problem is, why you should watch this video. He has these zooms, he has the pan cuts, he has just J cuts. He uses all these kind of ways to get you to watch. He uses B-roll. So it's a very interesting way. And he doesn't do screencasts or tutorials, but I really like his style and I appreciate him as a friend as well. A couple of other people who've done this really well, like coding, Code with Anya. She has a, a channel where 
you can see here, very interesting thumbnails. It makes you kind of think, oh, this is interesting. I want to click on this. Great titles, very well done. All these videos she does on, especially a lot about gaming and look like she has an AI video. And so is Kevin Powell. I really admire the way he creates videos. He's always so full of energy. He has kind of a little bit of mystery when you start his videos. The change is how I use media queries. Create an anime circular progress bar, front end devs take on CSS battle. He does like these fun CSS battles. He really knows his things really well and it makes me wanna click. So I kind of take inspiration from other channels like these, especially when I'm coming up with my thumbnails and titles. I'll often just look at what everybody else is doing and try to think of a fun concept as well. In fact, this video was inspired a little bit by web dev Cody. So he's been doing web development tutorials for a while and he did a video on some tips on he had for YouTube. And I thought, hey, that'd be a fun topic. And also part of my work, I'm also doing some YouTube education. So I thought this would be a fun video to create. I will see a very important thing about creating YouTube videos, especially if you're first starting off, is to try to get a good schedule together and to stay consistent. In other words, try to post at least I'd say once a week, but I really would suggest even twice a week. I think that's a good cadence. And if you can do three times, that's great. Maybe two videos in a short might be a good way to start off with because you'll find out that more reps you put in, you'll become faster at editing. You'll become more comfortable on camera. Your quality will generally go up over time as you get better at doing this. It's also a good way for the algorithm to start picking up your videos especially if you have quantity, they'll know what to expect and they can start recommending it to other people. It'll also start showing up on search and other places which are really important. So I would highly recommend at least doing at least one, but if not two videos a week to start. And then you can always adjust or go back. So if you do two videos a week for maybe three months and you feel like it's too much, you can go back down to one video. But if you're already at one video a week and it's too much, I would not recommend going down to every two weeks or once a month. I feel like that only works if you have a cinematic or you're doing these really highly edited videos, but often most educational videos, unless you're, a, unless you're like Fireship or a very edited channel, are pretty straightforward to get done. Now the one problem with creating two videos a week, especially if you're teaching content, is that then you'll have to create basically apps all the time or demos all the time. You'll have to find creative ways of displaying that, you'll have to edit it, you'll have to figure out bugs. Oftentimes when I create a video, what I'll do is I'll spend a few hours creating the app, fixing any bugs, I'll do like a mini code review, maybe sometimes I'll show it to somebody, and then I'll re-record it with me going through and coding along while I'm talking in front of the camera. And so that process could take many hours. But just keep in mind, not every video has to be like that. You could also change it up. Maybe you already have an app created and you wanna show it off. You can just quickly show the highlights of it and put the link in the description to the GitHub link. That's what I often do. Uh, sometimes I kind of just go off the rails like I am doing today and have a completely non-coding video like this. So you do have a lot of ways to change up what you're doing. All right, so that's a lot I covered. I think I could probably talk about this for another hour. It's just a fun topic. Leave any comments or questions below if you want to hear more about creating content online. It's something I've been doing for a long time. I really enjoy it. Uh, and if you do create a YouTube channel because you watch this, let me know. Just I'm on Twitter or X at E-R-I-K-C-H. Tweet me out. I will give you a shout out in one of my next videos. Thanks.